Hi, my name is Miss Tiffany and I work at the Egg Harbor City branch of the Atlantic County Library System. And I have a great activity for you guys to do at home today because, well, we want something new to do since we've been in, at home for a while now. This activity is going to be a STEM activity. What is STEM? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And we're gonna use a little bit of all four of these to create a maze today. And it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Um, you're going to need a few supplies, and it's probably things that you already have around your house, even if you're not sure you have them around your house. The first thing you're going to need is a box with four sides. One, two, three, four. <gasps> well, what if I don't have a box with four sides at my house? Bet you do, and you don't even know it. You could take a cereal box, cut around, hold it back, and you have a box with one, two, three, four four sides. Just that easy. You're going to need a blank piece of paper, a straw, and if you don't have a straw, you can always take a piece of paper, roll it really tight, and make your own straw. You just need something to make sure it seals correctly, like a little piece of glue or a little piece of tape. You're also going to need glue. And if you don't have glue at home, you can always use tape. I just like glue a little bit better. You're going to need a pair of scissors. Whenever we're using scissors, please be careful with them. We're also going to use a marker, a pencil, and my favorite, something that rolls. Now, I don't have any marbles at my house, but I do have yummy, delicious gobstoppers. So they're round and they can move easily through your maze. It will work perfectly. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take our plain pieces of paper and make sure that they fit inside of our boxes. Easiest way to do that is go on the back and trace it to the size of your box. Once you have a piece of paper that's the size of your box, flip it over and make sure that it fits inside the box nicely. It should lay flat. That way we have a flat surface for our maze to roll around in. Now, this comes our creative part and a little bit of our math part too. We're going to take our piece of paper and we're going to draw a maze on it. Now, the maze can be any way you want to. It can have straight lines, it can have little spirals, it can have dead ends. The most important part though is that it has a start and a finish. Why do we need a start and a finish? Because how else would we know where to start and how would we know if we won? So make sure you always put a start and a finish. While you're creating your maze, make sure that you're measuring so that my gobstopper rolled away. Oh. <laughs> so that your gobstopper can fit through each piece of your maze, all the way from start to finish. Once you do that, here comes the sticky part. You're going to take a straw. You're going to line it up with the lines that you already made. Take a marker and mark it so that you know where to cut at. Then you're going to take your scissors, cut, use your glue, put it on the paper, and then glue your straw down. Once you're done with that, you're going to do it for each line that you have. So the more lines you have, the longer it's going to take. The less lines you have, the easier it's going to be. But it's a little bit more fun if you have more lines because it makes it a little bit of a harder maze to do. Then, once you have that all completed, you take your piece of paper, stick it inside your box, and you have your maze. Finished! Just that easy. Now, I don't know if some of you noticed, but one of my straws moved. So we got to make sure that the glue is finished drying before you move your marble around in it. Otherwise, it'll mess up the maze a little bit. But that's it. That's all I have. And I hope you guys stay safe. Stay home. Make sure we're washing our hands and covering our faces. And hopefully I will see you guys again when I do my next video. Have a great day. Bye.